This is the 16th meeting of criminal law. With this episode, we begin our study of the law of attempts. This returns us to the so-called general part of the criminal law. The homicide offenses belong to the special part in which particular offenses are defined. The law of attempts belongs to the general part because any crime defined in the special part can be attempted. Attempted murder, attempted larceny, attempted uttering a false instrument, aka check kiting, and so on. We start with the case of People versus Rizzo. In Rizzo, the defendant is convicted of attempted robbery. On appeal, the conviction is reversed. The court holds that the defendant had committed no crime at all. Nevertheless, the court praised the police for their excellent work and bravo to these wide awake guardians of our peace. It was not as though the police had no reason to arrest Rizzo. The police had evidence that he and his confederates intended to rob a certain payroll courier. They failed, but their intent was clear. We might ask, why criminalize failure? No harm, no foul, right? The law of attempts is premised on the view that attempting to commit a crime is itself a crime. A utilitarian can support this premise by pointing to the need to deter attempts by punishing them separately. A retributist can support punishing attempts by pointing to the wrong done by the attempt itself, even if it does not succeed. The law condemns punishment for thoughts alone. An attempt involves conduct and does not consist in the bare intention to engage in conduct. Does the gravity of an attempt vary with the gravity of the crime attempted? It is easier to address this question if we first introduce a bit of jargon. Let's call the crime that is attempted the target offense. If the attempt succeeds, then there is liability for the target offense, but none for the attempt. The attempt is said to merge into the successful target offense. When the attempt is wide of the mark and fails, then we have the possibility of a charge of attempting the target offense. So, given a certain penalty assigned to a conviction for the target offense, what can we say about the gravity of a conviction for the attempt to commit that target offense? At British common law, all attempts were punished as misdemeanors. A misdemeanor carries a possible sentence of confinement for up to a year. This was true regardless of the target offense. An attempt to commit even the most serious felony was only punishable as a misdemeanor. In the majority of American jurisdictions, the penalty for an attempt is pegged at some discount from the penalty for the target offense, typically one half. This may strike us as a Solomonic compromise between not punishing at all and punishing as severely as a successful offender would be punished. A better explanation is that the law should leave an incentive to the actor to stop trying. If the actor is already liable for the full punishment, why not keep trying? The model penal code and a minority of American jurisdictions assign the same penalty to the attempt as that for the target except for the gravest crimes. The thought is that the defendant should not reap a reward for his good luck and not succeeding if he acted with all the culpability needed to convict him of the target. The model penal code makes an exception for the gravest offenses. If the attempted murderer is already exposed to the ultimate punishment, it may decide to have another go at it. They can't hang me twice, as the saying goes. So, the Model Penal Code punishes attempted murder as an offense of the same grade as manslaughter, one notch down.